Good morning and welcome to worship on this, the 14th of June. You're very welcome to share with us in our online worship at St Nicholas Methodist Church in Topsham. Come, let us worship the Lord. A call to worship. As Abraham welcomed the strangers, so God welcomes us. God greets us with joy and says, rest here for a while. God brings out water to wash our dusty feet. God prepares a meal to nourish our weary spirits. So let us receive the gracious hospitality of our God. Let us rest in his holy presence, where there is shade and water, food and laughter. Come, let us worship the Lord. Prayer of Approach O majestic lover of humanity, we come to you gratefully, for you have not left us like orphans in a cold universe, but embraced us through Christ Jesus. You call us to be sisters and brothers and joint heirs in the kingdom of your love. You have blessed us so remarkably. Please bless us again as we bow before you. May our worship clear our smudged vision, liberate our stodgy spirits, and uplift our lives in joyful praise. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our confession. God's warm and generous invitation leads us as to confess our faults and our folly. Holy Friend, because we did not create ourselves, because we do not understand ourselves, because we cannot reconcile ourselves, we come to you for divine help. Merciful Creator and Redeemer, you know us completely and love us utterly. There is not a thought or feeling, word, action, memory or hope that you do not see and understand. Please forgive our sins and remove our shame. Heal our diseases and redress our distortions. Reinforce our faith and enlarge our love. 
Let all that is true, beautiful and compassionate find a new lease of life in your character. For your name's sake. Amen. It is written, Christ Jesus did not arrive in the world to condemn us, but that the world through him might be rescued and healed. His word gives me the confidence to declare to you, my sisters and brothers, the forgiveness of sins and the liberty of the children of God. Thanks be to God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Matthew chapter 9, starting to read at verse 35. Then Jesus made a circuit of all the towns and villages. He taught in their meeting places, reported kingdom news and healed their diseased bodies, healed their bruised and hurt lives. When he looked out over the crowds, his heart broke. So confused and aimless they were, like sheep with no shepherd. What a huge harvest, he said to his disciples. How few workers on your knees and pray for harvest hands. The prayer was no sooner prayed than it was answered. Jesus called 12 of his followers and sent them into the right fields. He gave them power to kick out evil spirits and to tenderly care for the bruised and hurt lives. This is the list of the 12 he sent. Simon, they called him Peter or Rock. Andrew, his brother. James, Zebedee's son. John, his brother, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the taxman, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, Judas Iscariot, who later turned on him. Jesus sent his twelve harvest hands out with this charge. Don't begin by travelling to some far off place to convert unbelievers. And don't try to be dramatic by tackling some public enemy. Go to the lost. Confuse people right here in the neighbourhood. Tell them the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick. Raise the dead. Touch the untouchables. Kick out the demons. You have been treated generously, so live generously. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Perhaps there is a lockdown lesson here. Perhaps we too have to step up to the plate and enter the fieldwork left workless by the current situation. But how do I hear you say, given the current restrictions, can I work in the field? Well, I'm going to suggest three ways. Prayer, post and power. When Paul the Apostle to the Gentile world was journeying across the known world, he would often comment how he was uplifted and supported by the prayers of others. To the church in Philippi he said, I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. And to the believers in Rome, strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf. So, whilst Paul was able to conduct face-to-face -face encounters, he supported what I would call a triangle of prayer. You know, everybody prays, whether they think of it as praying or not. The odd silence you fall into when something very beautiful is happening, or something very good, or very bad. The R that sometimes floats up out of you when in the sky a rocket bursts over the water. The stammer of pain at somebody else's pain. The stammer of joy at somebody else's joy. Whatever words or sounds that you use for sighing, these are all prayers in their way. These are all spoken not just to yourself, but to something even more familiar than yourself and even more strange than the world. According to Jesus, by the far most important thing about praying is to keep at it. How earnest are our prayers, how intentional, how out of a real sense of compassion for those for whom we pray and to the one to whom we pray. We'll come back to the harvest of prayer in a moment. There is a remarkable joy about receiving a surprising post or a parcel. Imagine the joy and the tears when we received a cream tea by post on the occasion of VE Day from our daughter Gemma. Or look at the work that Gemma undertook as part of her Silver Elephant Studios for, in support of Age UK by creating hug hearts to send to others during this time. Simple acts but with a profound impact. Today, there are so many different ways of communicating, email, Facebook, messaging, and so on. We hear so much about false news, but what about the good news? Michael Green described the first Christians as eagerly gossiping the gospel with everyone and anyone. What a great goal for a church to embrace. That was certainly true of the people dispersed from Jerusalem and those in Antioch and Thessalonica and Rome and Ephesus. Those early churches seemed to know intuitively that speaking truth in love meant talking with people about Jesus, sharing a testimony or scripture, urging people to believe, inviting them to church and so forth. In every conversation, mature Christians are never far from Jesus and healthy growing churches gossip the gospel to their communities, not just from the pulpit, but out in their neighbourhood, workplaces, at every space where friends gather to talk in every season and by every means. This doesn't just happen. We will not have churches that speak the truth in love to their communities unless we envision a full scope of what this might entail. Talk and encourage one another. Do you remember the Yellow Pages advert that said, let your fingers do the walking? How about let your fingers do the preaching? Share the praying, reap the harvest. 
Could you send a prayerful gospel text or email? An outbook? An outbox to inbox prayer? Or what about an invite to sharing our online service with somebody? Could you do that? Why not send the link of this service to someone else? Colossians 4, 2-5 encourage us to post our prayer, proclaiming the gospel and make the most of every opportunity. Let's be a church that meets the physical needs of our communities with love, their emotional needs with compassion but also their spiritual needs with the most contagious message of hope the world has ever known. Let's make the most of every opportunity. The third letter P in our three-stage gospel harvesting endeavour is power. There is a firm rider in Christ's harvesting manifesto. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Now, what if that was what I call a boomerang prayer? Have you ever heard of it? So often we conclude that God doesn't answer our prayer. Often when we pray that we want God to intervene in a spectacular fashion, to to heal miraculously, to change evil hearts, to quash injustice, more commonly, God works through us. Like a boomerang, the prayers we toss at God come swishing back towards us, testing our response. Philip Yancey wrote that his understanding of prayer has changed over the years. This is what he said. I now see it less as trying to convince God to do what I want done and more about discerning what God wants done in the world and how I can be a part of it. You see that praying, posting, requires power outside of ourselves. But do you also see that when the disciples said to Jesus, teach us to pray, they were inevitably given the most powerful prayer ever shared. It's riven through with kingdom power. Just look at it. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. With some ancient versions adding the words, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory. So if these prayers are answered in us, then anything we ask inevitably will be according to God's will. The great preacher Charles Spurgeon said, Without the Spirit of God, we can do nothing. We are like ships without the wind, branches without sap, like coals without the fire. We are useless. One minister put it this way, The early church had little machinery, but they had power. A young woman, a member of the church, worked in a large umbrella factory, and at that time was considered to be the largest factory in the world. She said to him one day, Minister, I have to hunt for another job. What's the matter? Have they discharged you, said the minister? No, they haven't discharged me. Well, hasn't your factory enough orders to keep going all the time? No, not at all. They have more orders than they can fill, but they haven't enough electricity to keep all the machines going at once and my machine has to lie idle part of the week, and I lose so much time and pay. The trouble with the factory is they have more machinery than power. What was it Jesus said? The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. What is our response? My brother's church has a prayer messaging train that uses the phone messaging to share concerns of prayer. That's the task of gospel harvest working. Could sending an encouraging text, email or even snail mail reach parts of the harvest field that traditional church methods fail to reach? And what of power to become the answer to prayer and enlist in the harvest work? The minister tells about an experience he had several years ago. He was standing in line in a local community convenience store. In front of him was a boy about eight or nine years old. 
He was looking over the display of sweets and chocolates. He remembers thinking good choice when the lad picked up a Snickers bar and laid it on the counter. The cashier rang it up and told him how much it was. The boy reached in his pocket and pulled out an assortment of coins and plopped them down on the counter. The cashier gave him one of those looks and started counting. Then he looked up and said, you're 12p short. You need another 12p. The boy's shoulders dropped, his face dropped. He went from a grin to a groan in less than a second. Just as the cashier started to tell the boy to put the, the chocolate bar back, the pe preacher reached into his pocket and pulled out 12p and put it on the counter. The boy's face was like Christmas. He said, thanks, mister, and took off. But then he turned around and came back. He held up the chocolate bar and said, do you want a bite? The minister said, no, thanks. You eat it. Then the boy looked up at the minister and asked, How come? How come you did that? Before the man could answer, he got a look of recognition across the face of the boy. Oh, I know you. You're the preacher. Jesus made you do it, didn't he? What could he say but yes? Then the lad said, I'm sure like Jesus, and I'm glad Jesus makes nice people like you. Bye. Then he was gone. Perhaps there is a fourth P. Yes, harvesting is about prayerful preparation, purposeful posting, spiritual empowering. But is that fourth P practice? Putting our faith and outreach into practice. We will never change the world by going to church. We will only change the world by being the church. And maybe your story is the key that can unlock someone else's door to life in such a way that those who know you but don't know God will come to know God because they know you. In the name of Christ. Amen. Prayers of Thanksgiving God Most High, before your Son fed the multitudes, he first gave thanks. Before he raised his friend Lazarus, he gave thanks that all might know your glory. And so, as we are blessed to do your works in the world, that all indeed might know your glory, we thank you and praise you, O Lord. For the grace to feed the poor, we thank you and praise you, O Lord. For the grace to heal the sick, we thank you and praise you, O Lord. For the grace to lift up the broken, we thank you and praise you, O Lord. For the grace to harbour the refugee, we thank you and praise you, O Lord. For the grace to aid the endangered, we thank you and praise you, O Lord. For the grace to speak on behalf of the marginalised and vulnerable, we thank you and praise you, O Lord. For the grace to be for the prisoner, the addict, the lost, the outcast, the dying, what your Son has been for us, a comfort, a beacon, a shepherd, a rabbi, a healer, a hope the salt of the earth, the light of the world. We thank you and praise you, O Lord. Amen. Today, as part of our prayers of intercession, we will remember our brothers and sisters in Christ, our Methodist brothers and sisters in Christ, across the Exeter Coast and Country Circuit. So let's remember, as we view each of the, the churches, 
and let's pray that God will continue to bless them in their ministry during this period of lockdown. Let us pray. And our prayers of intercession for all whose image of your creation is marred by pain and suffering. Your kingdom come, your will be done. For those who wake each morning to shellfire and destruction, your kingdom come, your will be done. For children dispossessed of childhood and transformed into soldiers. Your kingdom come, your will be done. For orphans wandering lonely roads to uncertain futures. Your kingdom come, your will be done. For each persecuted family carrying your cross. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. For those known to us, we hold them in a moment of silent prayer.
your kingdom come, your will be done. Amen.
We leave today going into a future as yet unmapped. Take faith with you as you go, into the parts of your life not yet travelled by love, into the parts of the world unexplored by grace. Let compassion and hope be the roads that you follow, today and always. Amen. And the blessing. The blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.